I need several desserts for that meal, so just bring them when you come. We'll be fine. You need any more of the gelatin? Or, or gelatin salad. Or gelatin desserts, as I said. So. I just have one more an announcement. Um, it's a note. It says, Dear Plateau UMC Church family, I thank you so much for the lovely flower arrangement you gave me on my departure from the music director position. They bring me joy each time I look at them each day. I also appreciate the kind words and cards from you all. May we all be blessed as we continue in this service. Sincerely, Pam. So, 
Oh, yes, council meeting this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Pastor, I've got a couple of quick ones. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome Betty Smith from the Arena and Pianist who we have in you and I. We have an African choir. I want to thank Zachary for being along with us today. And speaking of choir, we need some, some folk, folks to come and join us. So if you can sing soprano or alto or sing tenor or bass, we'd love to have you with fashion today at 5 30. Uh, so if you could come and join us, we'd be happy to have you. Thank you. 
And now the not ready for prime time players of Plateau would like to present a reading of Psalm 118. shouting and cheering. Then he turns the corner and you see him. 
coming down the road, riding on a donkey. People are throwing their coats, palm branches down for him to walk on him, to walk on, shouting, Hosanna, and blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. That was fun pretending. That parade for Jesus really happened long ago. Today we celebrate that day on Palm Sunday, the joyous parade welcoming Jesus. What do you do when you're excited? <clears throat> do you smile? Do you shout? Do you jump and dance? God wants you to celebrate what he's done for you. He likes when you get excited about his love for you. He wants you to tell others about him. There were some people at the parade for Jesus who weren't excited. They were angry and wanted everyone to be silent. Do you know what Jesus said? Listen to this. I tell you, if there were if there were silent, that means if people did not praise Jesus, the very stones would cry out. Do rocks talk? If you saw a stone, would you think it would talk? No, right? But God is so, ama so amazing, so incredible, so worthy of our praise, that if we do not praise him, Jesus said, rocks will. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the many ways you show our love for, for me and all these children. Thank you for sending Jesus to die and rise to take away my sins. Work in my heart and help me praise you every day. Amen. <clears throat> Children are dismissed to Children's Church. Our scripture this morning comes from the 21st, gospel, 21st chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, starting in verse 1. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is God's word for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
thanks to our choir and especially thanks to, to Mike for uh, leading them through that. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day, this day that begins the most holy week of the year. We pray, Lord, that you help us to prepare our minds and our hearts, not only for the words that are about to be spoken in the next few moments, but prepare us for this week. Help us to be reflective and meditative on how we can be better representatives of you here on earth. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, this morning we're going to have a little history lesson. On Palm Sunday, April 9th, 1865, Confederate General Robert E. Lee surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant, the General of the Union Army, at the village of Appomattox Courthouse, Virginia. The surrender ended the bloodiest war ever fought on American soil. State against state, brother against brother, it was a conflict that literally tore a nation apart. Five days later, Good Friday, April 14, 1865, America's most revered president, Abraham Lincoln, was short, shot and mortally wounded by John Wilkes Booth in Ford's theater. It was Lincoln who wrote that Emancipation Proclamation that ended slavery in the U.S. forever. And it was Lincoln who wrote and gave the Gettysburg Address. Lincoln hated war, but he was drawn into this one because he believed it was the only way to save the nation. On Palm Sunday, the war ended, triumphed. On Good Friday, Abraham Lincoln became the first U.S. president to be assassinated. Tragic. Well, welcome to Holy Week. Welcome to the triumph and the tragedy of the six days preceding Easter. That's the kind of world we live in, in the triumphant end to a terrible war on Sunday and the tragic slaying of the great leader who brought us through that war on Friday. One moment we were up on top of the world, believing that nothing, absolutely nothing, could go wrong. And then suddenly, literally, all hell breaks loose. That, as they say, is life. Now go with me to the year 1942. The first American troops are marching into London. We're entering the conflict known as World War II. The people of London are cheering the American troops. The friendly reception exhilarates the young soldiers. They sing as they march. And suddenly the troops turn into a main street and the strange hush falls over the scene. The happy songs die on their lips. They're looking for the first time upon an area in London that had been blown to pieces. They see the great wounds in the city inflicted by falling bombs. They suddenly realize the city has suffered terribly. In these young soldiers' hearts, one moment, one moment, celebration, the next great sadness. Unfortunately, friends, life is like that. Celebration and sadness. Triumph and tragedy. Some of you might remember the days when we said that the best investment that you could make possible is owning your own home. Remember when banks were just absolutely begging people to take out home loans because property values seem to be destined to increase and rise forever. 
Remember how you could look at the equity in your home and all of a sudden feel rich. How foolish we were to forget the lesson of the stock market scarcely 15 years ago. In a free market, bubbles have a tendency to burst. And all it takes is one little pinprick. The triumph and the tragedy. Palm Sunday, Good Friday, life happens. The amazing thing is that it happened to the Son of God. Acclaimed on Sunday, crucified on Friday, it's incredible. Did they realize who he was? Sure, he gave up his divinity when he entered the world as a tiny baby. But couldn't they see his miracles? Didn't he raise Lazarus from the dead? Couldn't they sense that he was no ordinary man? He was Messiah, Savior, Redeemer, sent into the world by the Father to save the world from its sins. How could they possibly miss that? How could they possibly not know? No wonder Holy Week moves from triumph to tragedy. The expectations of the people had been dashed. They had voted for change, but change was nowhere to be found. Besides, who can live with peace to the nations? Bring the troops home. Not when you have enemies who want to destroy you. Even Jesus' disciples expected him to exercise his kingship by vanquishing their enemies. The two disciples on the road to Emmaus tell the resurrected Jesus who walks along with them, yet whom they still don't recognize, that they had hoped that this Jesus was one to redeem Israel. When Jesus appears to his disciples before the ascension, the disciples are still asking, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? They wanted Jesus to establish an earthly kingdom and to make them his special lieutenants. Gee, were they disappointed. They wanted Churchill and they got Gandhi. And so some of the crowd started to turn away. They turned away from him and much of the crowd turned against him. It should not be surprising that some of those who sang that sweet hosannas on Palm Sunday were shouting, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him on Good Friday. Triumph and tragedy. Palm Sunday, Good Friday. The crowds turn their backs on the Son of God. But the obvious question is would it be any different today? Think about that for a minute. Would we welcome Christ into our community, into our church, into our family? It's kind of an unsettling question, isn't it? But it needs to be asked. Mac comes through the doors. Long, stringy hair, beard, shabby clothes, rips in his pants, kind of dirty, a few tattoos, earring on each ring, maybe one on his nose too. Would he get the seat of honor in our church? Or would he be told, um, 
there's, there's a place way back there behind the media booth. There's plenty of room for you to stretch out there. All you have to do is look at David. Is that how we would treat him? Or would we give him the seat of honor? <coughs> would we bring him up front? <coughs> let him sit in the first row? And treat him like one of us? Can we confront our own darkness? Can we confront our need for repentance, a need for turning around? Would we welcome Christ into our world? For you see Christ, the real Christ, comes as a disturber or an unsettler almost kind of like an anarchist. Think about the things that we value. Status, power, money, image. How does it all square with this humble figure that's riding into town on a donkey? Not very well, does it? Look at our popular heroes. And I'm thinking about the action type movies preferred by most males. How do the heroes in the movies spend their time blowing things up, avenging past wrongs, asserting their dominance over their foes? Again, reconcile those types of images with that humble figure riding on a donkey. Do you understand what it means to say Jesus is Lord? It means that we need to examine our lives, examine our goals, examine what it is that we're living for, and then ask ourselves, is that enough? Is this really the meaning of life? Or is there more? Is there an eternal dimension of life that calls us toward the heroic? Holy Week should be the time for increased reflection and subsequent repentance as we begin to try to start measuring our lives by our Lord's life and death. The triumph, the tragedy, Palm Sunday, Good Friday, life happens. <clears throat> the amazing thing is it that it happened to the Son of God. <clears throat> Would it be any different today? We just had six people killed in the school in Tennessee. Unfortunately, think back about a hundred years where a lynching was a social event. People dressed up for the occasion. It was clear these lynchings were a cultural phenomenon. They were events never to be missed. Pictures reminiscent from that time period show bodies hanging from a noose. And if you look closely, you might see in the background a man puffing on a cigar with a broad smile on his face. Others might be sipping beer or gossiping or smiling and laughing. Maybe there might be a couple of flirts and then enjoying a romantic type moment. Little boys beam with broad smiles, seemingly filled with pride to be part of this auspicious gathering. Okay. You and certainly I am repulsed by those images. What I want to remind you is that there 
not images from Rome about 2,000 years ago. These are images from America a hundred years ago. And friends, the same dark heart that beat in the hearts of the ancestors beats within each one of us as well. And as much as we'd like to think differently, human nature has not changed much in these past 100 years. That's why any appeal to discrimination, prejudice, or hatred, whether against people of another race or another religion, or whatever that prejudice might seem to be that cannot be tolerated, not by people whose Lord was hung on a tree while mocking soldiers gambled for his garments below. Palm Sunday, Good Friday, life happens. It happened to the Son of God and it still happens in our world today. But listen, Real close. Here's what we need to see. While the cross of Christ reveals the evil that's in humanity and what it's capable of, it also reveals the love of which God is most capable of as well. Ultimately, the story of Holy Week is one of triumph and tragedy. Then triumph once again. Not only because of Easter Sunday, but because of Christ's victory over sin and death on Calvary. And that's why the cross is so precious to each and every one of us. It calls us to repentance, but it also represents God's grace, which covers all of our sins, even our most grievous ones. Jesus' undermining of power can instruct us to not fall prey to the temptation of gaining power that we might experience all around us these days. We see corrupted examples of power in our world today, governments, militaries, corporations, even churches are not immune to unholy power grabbing. The love of power can destroy us all. So think about it for a moment. Are we in love with power? Are we in love with riches? Or are we in love with God? Only you can answer that question. Let's pray. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your son Jesus who gave up his life, his seat on the throne to come and to live the life that we all live, to experience all the things that we experience, the good, the bad, and different. It was just one little difference, though. <clears throat> he did it without sin. And that's something we have so much difficulty doing. But thanks be to God that Jesus was willing to take the challenge that his Father gave him to go to the cross, to be whipped, to be beaten, to be crucified, to die the ultimate death for you and for me, so that we might gain eternal life. Tragedy in triumph. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I invite our ushers to come forward to receive our morning offering. For our offertory music today, Betty and I will be presenting a song titled John.
tall pine shuddered in the glade because a strand must be his doom stripped bare upon the ground the beams were laid and all the Side in the gloom. The cross was heavy. The cross was heavy as Jesus carried it up that hill. The forest trembled, the forest trembled, and the pines were mourning still.
God, we thank you for your gifts. We take this opportunity to give back a portion of those gifts and pray that you might anoint and bless those offerings and make them be for us a means that we can expand your kingdom, not only here in this local area, but throughout the world. We pray this all in the precious and loving name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Let's just take a brief moment to share the peace of Christ with each other in whatever fashion is most comfortable to you. Peace, blow a kiss, hug somebody, shake their hand. May love be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks in praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, love eternal creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us a breath of life. When we could not fathom your endless love when we turned away, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise the name of love and join in their unending hymn by singing, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. What love you have given us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit poured out through him as he brought good news, proclaimed freedom, healed, and fed. As we prepare for this holy week in which we remember the cost of love in a world where hatred exists, we come with awe and reverence to this table where Jesus proclaimed his ultimate message of love. There is room at the table of God's kingdom for all of us. On the night he gathered with his disciples in an upper room, he took the bread He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. Gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Whenever you do so, do so in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, this is the blood of my new and everlasting covenant for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of this outpouring of love in Jesus Christ, we offer our love completely as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your love and spirit on all of us gathered here this morning and on these gifts of bread and juice and make them be for us the love of Christ so that we may be for the world the love of Christ. By your spirit, make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all the honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now uh, share together the words that Jesus gave us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is set, it's prepared, and it's open to all of us, no matter who we are, with one condition, that we love God and are willing to share with each other. So come, as we begin this Holy Week, with hearts filled with joy and a smile on your face as we feast on this God-given banquet.
Dr. Kirby Music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Thank you. Thank
as we begin and get further and deeper into this Holy Week, let us be reminded of the sacrifice that was made for each and every one of us. Let's try to make this week a special week. Let's try to attend as many of the services that we can this week. Let's try to make it a special week for God, not for us. So go now, look for love in all the right places. May His love and grace and mercy and forgiveness be with you all. Have a great week, everyone. God bless you all. See you Thursday night. Thursday night. Thursday night.